Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. So, we got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God, you made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Hey, dorks, what are we <laughs> blowing up today? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and I've lost six pints of blood. A normal person dies at four. <laughs> And this is <laughs> the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of Apollonia. No! Oh, my God. Um, oh, well. Oh, the bits have begun. <laughs> oh, man. Just immediately. I had to go with a car-related intro, so there you go. <laughs> this movie, uh, we're all, our brains are all broken after this, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm smarter for having watched <laughs> this. I know stuff now. Just like some of the characters in this movie. <laughs> oh my god, incredible line. I gotta say, right off the top, I, I can't remember if this was on mic or off, Dustin, but mm. you said specifically, Nathan, you might love this movie. You might. <laughs> and the verdict? I'm here to tell y'all, I've seen all of the Fast and Furious films. I think, I think I'm comfortable saying this is the worst one. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. I'm gonna disagree. Oh yeah, I, I disagree wholeheartedly. <laughs> because this movie has one thing that so many others don't have. Gay Joker? Jason Momoa. And that's Jason Momoa just <laughs> fucking going for it. About halfway through this movie I, I turned to my girlfriend who hilariously has only seen the first two films and then this one. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the whiplash, boy. I turned to her and I said, if you told me at the beginning of uh, last year that within two years I'd see Barry Coogan and Jason Momoa play the Joker and Momoa would be better at it. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have believed you. Man, so we we should say right away, the reason we're doing it this week, this episode, mm. Fast X, is because it is Thanksgiving week. Sure. And I think it's going to be a tradition around here now that our Thanksgiving episode's got to be a Fast and Furious movie. I like, don't hate that idea. I'm yeah. fucking in. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Mally back for this one because this was his pick. Woo! And so it's interesting going from doing the very first movie in the franchise last season. Oh my gosh. To this one. Yeah. And Wait, did we? We did. You were not a part of that, unfortunately. Tight. T- so tight. I think, I think you blew up in a NOS explosion, if I remember correctly. So tight. There was a moment in this movie when they were playing Rocket League with a bomb. Oh my God. That I, I said out loud, we started with TV VCR yeah. combos. Yeah. TV VCR combos and dope for the soundtrack, if you'll That's recall. Right. The the needle drops in this movie, I know we're getting into it right away. The needle drops in this movie are from Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I was going to say it rivals 365 days because it is just nonstop wall to wall needle drops with some of the dumbest lyrics of songs I've ever heard, including this movie. I'm yeah. sorry, I have, I have to interrupt. Yo, please. Take me back to the city I call my city. What the fuck it's are like you Axel doing? Rose got amnesia. <laughs> God, <laughs> I, I yeah, I think this movie would be maybe 40 minutes shorter if one you removed all the establishing shots. Mm-hmm. But then how would we know where we are, Nathan? Yeah, how would we know? How could we possibly Because know? we have <laughs> absurd quantum of solace style uh chirons we on the sure screen do. telling us where we are at all times. It also helps if you cut out, I don't know, the 20 minutes from Fast 5. Uh-huh. I think that would also <laughs> that that okay that is my biggest issue with this movie don't you don't fuck with fast five don't remind me of the best one yeah, yeah. like fast yeah, yeah. five is so good <laughs> yeah don't don't no yeah it is it's like the, okay so in the first season of community there is an episode where jack black plays a character who is apparently supposedly been there the entire time yeah mm-hmm. and he's they like awkwardly insert him into earlier scenes from the show <laughs> that is what momoa <laughs> and uh alan richson do in this movie they literally forced gump him <laughs> into <laughs> (laughs) Five. Mm -hmm. John Lennon might as well have been there. Can you imagine? (laughs) (laughs) I see what you did. I I wanted to ask you guys none of us rewatched Fast Five before watching this one, right? No, but it's imprinted in my heart. Okay, I I was going to say because I don't know how well this shit tracks. I'm sure it doesn't. Oh, there's a clear shot of the driver driver. of the car that Jason Momoa is supposed to have driven. (laughs) Yes. But, dude, these movies, they fucking retconned stuff uh, like yeah you're gonna tell me the movie from 2003 takes place in like 2017 
scene now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> like, these motherfuckers, like, Japan ain't still on flip flones. <laughs> uh-uh. I, I said, I said flones, <laughs> move past it. <laughs> I think these movies are two installments away from a crisis on Infinite Earths where Vin <laughs> Diesel, like, reboots the universe. Like, I'm down! Can I tell you, there's th- 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 a perfect segue. Yeah. <laughs> there is a perfect segue into what I want to say, mm. which is, I think on this watch, I finally nailed down why I don't, as a whole, enjoy this franchise, and I kind of take umbrage with it. Please. Because you hate fun. That's part of it, honestly, (laughs) because I realized- I've met your wife. You don't like having a good time. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) I realized that the fourth movie started this. This franchise is just a little kid playing with his Hot Wheel cars. Yeah. But the difference is they treat it dead fucking serious. That is the thing. Do they? Well, I will point you to a scene where a man uses a crane, like a flipper in a pinball machine to knock a bomb into the Vatican. I like, shouted, I, fuck you at the screen. <laughs> I shouted, fuck yes. Like, everyone's related. The twists are unfulfilling. No one could just die. Dude, the like, best part is there's an entire exposition scene calling all of that out I know. by a character in this movie. I True. Know. And it's incredible. You cannot put a lampshade on it. I refuse to let Alan Richardson come in here and just be like, let me explain to you why these movies are garbage. Let me just it, let me justify it real quick. Hold on, stay here. Well, let, 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 let's hear Jack Reacher out. <laughs> Everyone becomes family. It's a cult with cars. No one dies. Oh, Jesus, it's incredible. <laughs> and also, he's saying all this to Brie Larson. Yes. Like, oh my yes. god! Oh who my is, god! Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. But who's dressed exclusively like David Bowie they, throughout this she movie? She says the word Bowie in the movie. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that scene. I well, yeah, we'll get to that fucking scene. Oh. I. Oh. The, you can hear the difference in how Mally and I feel about this movie. <laughs> my notes get angrier as the runtime goes along. Me like, too. My notes at some point are just like, fuck you, I'll move on, keep going. My notes get shorter and shorter because I was so fucking in. My, my thing is, as these movies go along, and I by and large enjoy these for what they are, mm-hmm. but as they go along, I cannot separate what I know of Vin Diesel's fucking ego oh, from right. these films. And, and honestly, of most of the cast. I mean, this is a movie where interviews were coming out with Michelle Rodriguez saying, like, we didn't need a fucking director to shoot my fight scene. Like, Yeah, Justin Lin will agree with you on that, apparently. <laughs> right. And the thing is, like, you get to a point where, uh, the, yeah, the characters cannot be harmed. Vin Diesel drives down an exploding dam and doesn't even have a bruise dude. on him. <sighs> dude. And all the... I, this is one of the few series where the drama behind the scenes has been so annoying yeah. <laughs> that, I, that I can't not think about it the entire time like there's there's moments where i'm like we this scene is 15 minutes long because we need to let luda and tyrese riff for a Dude, little bit the riffing is obnoxious as balls in this movie <laughs> i don't need i'm gonna be honest oh. though i love ludicrous and tyrese in these movies no, I, it's- I love them but it's this is the this was the movie where i was like oh you truly don't have anything for these characters to do do you there's literally a shot where it's just tyrese talking <laughs> off camera just making up shit just riffing yeah and i'm like the scene's over move on dc you work you work in post this is what happens when you release the assembly cut <laughs> oh my god that's what this is that's a hundred percent what this is nothing could be cut you got to put it all in it's like the the double pun that freddie does in nightmare on elm street part three they're like they're both good put them both in sure let's let's not make any creative decisions they put all the raw footage together and we're like there's not an ounce of fat on this they sure did and yet there's no story there's no story like this is this is a this is a two and a half hour act one uh (laughs) that at the hour mark my girlfriend goes this whole thing is shot and edited like that Publix commercial with the stepdad oh my god (laughs) it's just like the camera never stops moving it's constant zooms the shot never stays it's like John Ottman came in and did a day editing the the dinner scene because like it just never stops cutting I'll tell you exactly what the precipice of this movie is. Mm -hmm. Vin Diesel went into a movie theater in 2008, walked in very late to a showing of The Dark Knight, (laughs) saw the ferry scene with the boats, and was like, that's the movie. We'll make that a two and a half hour movie. We'll do it. (laughs) With a budget of $340 million. Well, and how much of that is uh, is spent on baby oil? Oh my god. A hundred million of it went to the cast alone. Yeah. I, 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 I want healthcare so badly for this country. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't. God damn it. That's not the only Dark Knight thing, though. Yeah. Like, they have the hubris to to do the clothesline with the truck yeah. in this movie as well. Yeah. <laughs> but all that to say, it's still a fun fucking time. Uh-huh. I get why people like these movies. Vin but- Diesel was just sitting there and was like, huh, what if I was Batman? Yeah. <laughs> what if I was also Optimus Prime because they shoot a scene where he becomes a car, basically. Like, that, <laughs> him driving down the dam. They do the thing from the first movie where they go into the mechanics of the car and uh-huh. they come out of his arm. I'm right. like, what do we do? <laughs> I am diesel fuel. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we're we're already <sighs> well into tr- like this this territory of this movie. Why don't we reel it back in just a little bit uh-huh. and let us actually talk about? Yeah, let's do what this movie doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> let's give you some backstory to the making of this film. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe that this movie is this year, 2023. I know. Boys, I saw this in theaters. I do not doubt it. I do not doubt it. The budget, as I mentioned, $340 million. I just want to get that out of the way right away. Like, you you look at this and, like, Infinity War, and you're like, huh. H- how does this cost more? Like, I don't understand. I think Infinity War was still more. Th- really? Okay. I think so. Oh. But still. Yeah. The movie managed to grow $705 million worldwide. What are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? I go by Roger Ebert's website when I list the cast, just so you guys know. Here we go. Buckle up. Vin Diesel, 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 Vin Diesel. Buckle up. This is going to take a while. Not Dwayne Johnson. Yes. Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, Jason Momoa. Tyrese. Tyrese, man. Tyrese. I'm sorry. I mispronounced it. Tyrese Gibson. Tyrese? I don't know what I said. I can't be bothered. Ludacris. We've done like obscure European movies that you've gotten the names right on it. And you get Tyrese incorrect? I cannot be, I cannot be bothered. Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, Jason Momoa, Natalie Emanuel, Jordana Brewster, John Cena, Jason Statham, Sun Kang, Alan Richon, Daniela Meliquar, Scott Eastwood, <laughs> Helen Mirren, Charlie Theron, Brie Larson, and Rita Marino. Oh my god. I just... Rita Marino... Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. This is her first appearance in the series, right? Yeah. Like, she's never... I couldn't tell you. I couldn't fucking tell you. 100%. Okay, so this movie acts like, oh yeah, Ab- Abuelita she's always been here right yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) to the point the point where she has to walk in and say my son yes your father and and that's not the only part where someone's like relation to another has to be established because there is one part isabel has to do it too yeah go get your son comma my my nephew nephew. i'm like oh thanks i need i truly unironically needed that because i did not watch the past couple entries into this franchise i gave up past and the furious (laughs) oh boy you've missed some stuff i really did and i okay i know this this, well, let me let me go ahead and run the end of the projector roll right here. <laughs> the movie manages right now to have a 56% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it and it earns it. <laughs> it earns every ounce of that 56%. Uh-huh. Okay, here's my question right away. Yeah. And I, I know this is well tried territory on other podcasts, but I genuinely do not know okay. the relationships that are going on here. Yeah. So Lil B, yes. Lil Brian, which in universe I feel like is very uncomfortable to do to name your kid after your still alive friend. But let's move past it, and not his dead mother, right? And let's let's move past it. <laughs> Who is Lil B's parents? Okay, because, Dom. Okay, and Elena. Yeah. Okay. Who the fuck is Elena? <laughs> she she worked, was in. Yeah. Go ahead, Nathan. She worked with Hobbs in five okay. and six, right? Okay. And then yeah, and then when Letty came back to life, yeah, her and. <laughs> Dom had a thing, but then Letty came back to life, and Dom was like, oh, I'm going to be with her again. Oh right, my God. but he also meets Lil B as a newborn, uh-huh. essentially, in, what was eight. it? Eight. Fate of the Furious, yes. yes. So we're continuing the trend of Dom being a bad partner from the first movie. <laughs> Which, that time th- that timeline makes no sense. <laughs> Zero sense. He should be much older. Well, that Toretto sperm got to incubate. Oh, true. <laughs> How old is this kid supposed to be? Because he kills people in this movie. <laughs> Six, I think is what Six? the, uh, I think is what the uh, the Wikipedia page says. That's too young. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. In the last, so in eight, he's a newborn. Right. In nine, he's like a toddler. Right. And then in this one, this, this kid's fucking like nine. Yeah, yeah, at least nine. And supposedly, like the real time has supposed to have passed between nine and this one, but right. they don't establish that. 
that in this movie. No. Because my first note, like, or the my first thought when I saw this in theaters was, this kid aged, like, six years in between <laughs> these movies. Like, right. what the fuck happened? That's the problem you get when you just put present day in, like, your, your movie as, like, a, a lower third. It's like, okay. It's a Friday the 13th style <laughs> timeline where, like, by part seven, it's actually taking place in 2015. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's watch the trailer as a recap. Mm-hmm. And I, God damn it, this trailer, three and a half minutes long. <laughs> what are we doing? Can I recommend a drink of the film to oh, pair please, with this trailer? please. Keep us all refreshed. It's not a Corona, right? No, it's not a Corona. <laughs> thank God. I can't afford that. Too rich for my blood. Absolutely. No, uh, my, my, my girlfriend very wisely bought uh, orange juice and champagne and made us Jason Mimosas. Perfect. Amazing. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, let's, let's watch the trailer here. Hell yeah! The road has been very hard, and yet here you are, building this. Battle. The movie is edited like this trailer. Yeah. What's going on in that head of yours? No, nothing. <laughs> Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I'm afraid of anything, but I am. <sighs> losing someone I love. He doesn't look like he's there. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many moments in this movie where I'm like, did you, were none of the actors in the same room? It was a COVID movie. That's it was true. a COVID That's movie. True. Who's the actress that played Lil B's mom in those other movies? Uh, uh Elena Pataki. Chris Hemsworth's wife. Elsa Pataki? Wait, her name is the same as her character name? Eleanor? Or I think it's Elsa Pataki. It's Elsa. Uh, Elsa. Okay. Because they look nothing alike to make this kid like her and Vin Diesel. Oh no, we'll we'll talk about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, there's a line in Fast Nine that's like, oh, that old Toretto gene pool to like, try to explain why John Cena is his brother. <laughs> and Jordana Brewster. Let's not forget. Oh, sure. All related. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's let's ride. Why does every character in these movies like they they just all look photoshopped? Yeah, the CG elements of this movie just it's uncanny. Like every character looks like a deep fake. Yes. Well, and I yes, yes, I don't know how to explain this without sounding terrible. Go on. (laughs) But I don't know if it was the way this was shot. There's something something is going on that makes Jason Momoa look really fat Mm. in some scenes. Am I am I wrong about that? That is true. No, you're right. It's weird. Because he's not at all. No, he's not. It's probably just the lens choice, honestly. That's what I was thinking. And in fact, I think he looks fantastic in this movie. This purple outfit. <laughs> oh my holy God. shit. That outfit is everything to me. <laughs> Such a family. How do you choose the ones you save? And that look from Vin is all like th- there doesn't <sighs> He just looks sad through most of this movie. This trailer should have been over by the way. Yeah. I just got to say the trailer should be over by now. <laughs> Don't know how to drive. What if Han was like, absolutely not? <laughs> it's showtime. We go. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm coming for you, son. <laughs> that sigh was perfectly timed. This is the stunt I think that was the most offensive to me. Uh huh. It's fucking like a 14 story drop. Car's just fine. Uh huh. He's just fine. This is a little kid playing with his toys. This yeah. is exactly what this is. Good morning, sunshine. You gotta be kidding me. That scene, I, okay. Jesus fucking Christ. I remember seeing this part in the trailer, and I think I texted you guys, is there a f- is there a face-off scenario? Oh, God, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's not a zero. It's a non-zero plus chance that they eventually do that in this franchise. No, they went to space in the last one. Why can't Letty and Cypher switch places? Mm-hmm. I got a question, too. Uh, only one, really? Well, That's it. Th- my first of many. <laughs> Short episode. <laughs> 
Does anyone give a shit about Gal Gadot showing back up in these movies? No. Does anyone care? It made me laugh out loud. I just said, get the fuck out of here. Who <laughs> cares? I love that they give her zero lines of dialogue. Well, no, dude, the moment they brought back Owen Shaw uh-huh. in number eight. Yeah. Who's that? That Luke is Evans. Luke Evans' uh-huh. character from Six. Who's not in these movies anymore, right? So he's the bad guy in Six. He has a cameo in Seven. He's Jason Statham's character's brother. Of course. And then he has a small part in eight right this is like game of thrones level shit just going on i can't and then helen mirren is their mother right uh-huh. which i i read this interview with helen mirren where she said she based her performance as queenie off of her own performance uh in the queen mm-hmm. and i was like i want a career as long as that where i can say i inspire myself mm-hmm. <laughs> helen mirren's a fucking legend <laughs> she's a national treasure she asked to be in these movies just well not our country's national treasure <laughs> <laughs> there's too many times in this movie where i wrote X is too good for these movies. Like, Helen Mirren, too good for these movies. Mm. Rita Moreno, too good for these movies. Like, I just kept writing it down, mm-hmm. and I'm just... I don't, I don't know with, where does the buck stop? Where, I mean, I know they said this is not going to be a new trilogy, which doesn't make any sense considering you're still continuing your fucking story of your regular franchise. All of the supporting cast and most of the villains are always too good for these movies. I, yeah. just, uh, I also think, you know, Vin Diesel's a big RPG fan and it's fantastic that he gets to do his own Final Fantasy oh style 2 <laughs> in a couple of years. He's, he compared this new trilogy of his to the Lord of the Rings and I'm just like, the balls you have... <laughs> <laughs> to say that with a straight face. I Only just... instead of three movies of people walking, it's three movies of people driving. driving. Yeah. Right. You're kidding yourself if you think that third one's going to be the end. Where's that crossover? <laughs> Where's that crossover? I want the Lord of the Furious. <laughs> oh my god, we gotta drive to Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that they fucked up by look, I know this is probably a controversial thing. Brian should not be alive nope. in the movies. Nope. Yeah, it doesn't make yeah. It leaves a huge plot hole if, well, I mean, it already makes no sense that he's, that Dante is chasing not the guy who shot his dad. Yeah. yeah. But if he if he's got a vendetta against Dominic Toretto, he should also be after Brian in the same fierceness. One hundred percent. And one way you can get around that, and apologies to her, but you got to just kick Jordana Brewster out of the movies I because know. it doesn't make sense that she's there. And then they're like, "No, we're Brian's out of the game now, but his wife's still in." What the fuck? What? Hey, hey, they did that for one movie. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. I also love that this movie establishes that now they are officially the Avengers, mm-hmm. right? Like they are just they are just hanging out at Dom's house and handing out missions like just, they're fucking. Uh, the fact that he says that to Sun King of mm-hmm. like, this is Roman's mission. I'm like, get what the fuck are you talk about his mission? Right. You you guys race street cars. Well and also <laughs> before this they were taking missions to like wipe their records clean and all this stuff or as a favor. Now it's just no we are a superhero team. Yeah. We work for little nobody. Little no- <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Listen, all the Marvel fans are always bitching about how there's no West Coast Avengers movie. There you go. <laughs> it's right fucking here, yeah. guys. You're not wrong. You were not wrong. Tom Toretto is the Hawkeye we deserve. <laughs> Just, the, I mean, we did Quantum last week, and then we're doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not MI6. No. You're not handing out missions. The, and just the whiplash you get from <laughs> that movie to this. Hey, listen, I'm I'm putting Fast X over Spectre. Uh, it's it's neck and neck. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good question. <laughs> Argue with me, boys. No, Go no. ahead. I, I Go ahead. I give you that because that's the worst movie of those of the Craig era is Spectre. Mm-hmm. And without question, this is better. Yeah, this is better than that. All right. But would Spectre be better if Christoph Waltz's character was played by Jason Momoa? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. It's me, bro. The architect of all your pain. <laughs> yeah, it would be. I feel like he would throw a baby in at the end. Yeah. 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 L- not a physical baby. Oh. Well, actually, no, he might. <laughs> I take that back. He might throw a physical baby. A delicious <laughs> glass of milk, baby. My first note of the movie, and I think you'll appreciate this, Nathan, as a continuation from our conversation of the first movie. Uh-huh. Did you guys notice anything interesting about the production cards here at the beginning? One race. One race productions. What are we doing? <laughs> We're talking race wars in the first movie. We're talking one race in this movie. Which is ironic, because I have no idea 
idea what ethnicity Dom is supposed nope. to be in these. <laughs> nope. <laughs> My first note is the first production card tells us that this is an original film. Oh, yes. Is it? Yes. It's gotta the, be. The 11th Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> an original one race film. Oh, right yep. I miss the goofy Universal logos of the first few movies, too. I like, miss, yeah, we got David Banner and uh, Lil Flip in that second one. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, and like the, the rims, it turned into like a car rim or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I miss it too. It's it's too self serious now. Louis Leterrier is no John Singleton. I'll tell you that. I 100 agree with that statement. <laughs> Hot takes I on agree. this episode. Hot take. I, I Hot agree. Take. I agree. Oh, so I guess we got to call them fast takes. <laughs> and, I say, <laughs> and I say that as an unabashed fan of the first two Transporter movies. I say that as a fan of most of other John Singleton's other work. Dude, Transporter two fucking rules. Mm-hmm. I feel like the nerve you have post two thousand nine to call this character Lil B and then not give. Give Lil B the actual rapper a cameo in the movie or on, <laughs> at least on the soundtrack that's offensive to me I, sure. you can't do that and no one says anything is based throughout the whole movie what are we doing what are we doing <laughs> Missed opportunity. Okay, weird note. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I did not recognize drifting when I saw it, and so I my first note is what was Lil B trying to do? Yeah. Donuts, special donuts. What, what, you couldn't tell by the editing what the fuck he was supposed to be doing. I give you that. <laughs> well, yeah, I wrote why does nobody look like they're anywhere? <laughs> yeah. I guess they're trying to mimic the the first movie where Brian's doing that. Yeah, I guess I don't know. Maybe sure. I mean, there 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 are a couple moments like that, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a few moments where they're like we're throwing back to the original movie. We even have Letty jumping up into Dom's arms, like in the first. Yeah, one. we sure do. We sure do, but not to as good of a song. And he doesn't motorboat her. He doesn't motorboat her. <laughs> Man, when me and Nathan finally meet in person, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I got a question for you guys too. Yeah, uh, you know you don't have to start every topic. <laughs> with guys i have a question for you <laughs> fellas i have a question for you god uh, fuck do i ever hit my head so hard that i become evil and gay you become gay joker <laughs> <laughs> this is the best origin story for a villain i think of all time this is it's awesome kind of incredible <laughs> like i <laughs> Like, like a- Ashley, like halfway through the movie, was like, he is playing like Faye, right? And oh. I was like, yes, and it works. Like, Dude, I, he Momoa is in a completely different movie than the rest of the cast. No, 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 he's not in a different movie. He knows exactly. He's the only one who knows what movie he's he in. He knows yes, exactly he, what this movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, he, we get right before we smash the title card. His eyes pop open mm-hmm. like he's Jason Voorhees. Yes. He's like, <laughs> rules. <laughs> he is. He is unhinged. To a perfect T in this movie. Like, Absolutely. The fact that Vin Diesel was like, oh, I hate his performance because he's going over the top. He's chewing scenery. I'm like, do you understand what this franchise is? Right. Do you understand it at all? The scene of him talking to the dead guy. Oh, Best movie of the year. Best, Best movie of the year. <laughs> that scene is great. Release that as a short film and it's winning Sundance. They wanted to cut that. What? Uh, yes. They wanted to cut that scene. They're like, it's too over the top. I'm like, no, that is exactly what makes this character amazing. You guys <laughs> flew a Honda Civic to space. Right? <laughs> He's also, he is a full on cartoon comic book super villain. Licking a bloody knife after he stabs a guy level. That like it's- rules. <laughs> him doing the old like point and shoot, like mm-hmm. the Jeb Chelio style, mm-hmm. whenever the snipers fly down. Mm-hmm. It- God, I he's having a blast, and the movie suffers when he's not on screen. Yeah, I know you you in your intro, Nathan, pointed to one of the best line readings he has in this Holy movie. Holy shit! But my favorite line of this movie is where they're in Brazil, and he comes out in that purple outfit with his purple painted nails, huh? and he goes, "I'm Dante." Enchante. Enchante. <laughs> and he like does a little dip. Yeah. My God. I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm yeah. in for this next movie and the one after if Jason Momoa was still in. You know there was at least one take where he tried to kiss Vin Diesel's hand. Oh or my something. God. 100%. Yes. Yes. There's absolutely no way he got away with it, but he tried. That is in the vault. That is in the vault somewhere. <laughs> that is a take. Dude, that is a take. I also love his like intro scene when he confronts Charlize Theron oh. and he's just like, he grabs the God's eyes like, all right, nerds. <laughs> you know what best. to do. That's like, the best. Calling these mercenaries nerds. Come on, nerds. <laughs> the fucking awesome. That is my second favorite scene in the movie besides <laughs> talking to the corpses because it's a great villain introduction. Yes. It is. I actually got like chills when he has that bit where he goes, well, I'm talking to Zeke, Amir, yeah. Kevin's dad. Like he starts, he knows all of the yeah. security guards like details. Like I, I love all of that shit. And then kills the one guy that he says didn't even have a kitty cat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
No, I, I thought that stuff was great. Yeah. Charlie's Theron showing up in this cool ass DeLorean with the bloody handprint on the mailbox. Like <laughs> that stuff I'm all here for. It's I tell you what it mostly is, it's the stunt work that I'm just like, this movie thinks I'm so fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Like this whole franchise thinks I'm so stupid with these stunts. Yeah. When we're playing pinball in the Vatican, like, what are we doing? It's Rocket League. It yeah. is Rocket, it's Rocket League. League. Yes. I just I don't know, man. I, I get why people flock to these movies, but I'm like, Jesus. I mean, it's not the first time anyone's played with big balls in the Vatican. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Coming for the Catholic Church this season, baby. I was going to make a similar joke, so I'm glad one of us did. <laughs> I love when Cypher shows up. And here's the thing. Another actor that is too, too good, good for these movies, too Charlize good. Theron. What is she doing here? She's so <laughs> great, and she's done three of these now. Every line they give her in this movie is a trailer line. Uh-huh. Like, every line in this conversation is someone's coming for you. There's a war on the way. I met the devil tonight. I met your, the devil your tonight. friends are going to die. Yeah. But I love, she shows up bleeding out and Dom immediately pulls the I gotta stand next to you move uh-huh. to have this conversation like it's the Hobbs and Hobbs and Dom conversation shot I gotta stand next to you but look forward yes. and not look at you yeah it's so stupid that happens like three times in this movie where characters walk past each other to have a conversation mm-hmm. because uh, Ames has that with with Brie Larson as yep. well mm-hmm. it's, it's so funny I have a question too why continue living at this house they had it rebuilt yeah, it's been rebuilt a few times Times. What movie did it blow up in? Because I don't think I saw that one. Seven. Seven? Seven? Okay. I think I might have seen it. Yeah, Deckard blew it up. Yeah, what? that's that's where Jason Statham is just rocking motherfuckers. <laughs> yes. Their neighbors must hate them so fucking much. Hang on. Barbecues every Sunday? Every, yeah. Well, I mean, in their defense, that neighborhood's got a lot going on. I mean, they're a block away from the thriller house. So, <laughs> I mean, shit's going down constantly in that neighborhood. The parking on that street must be awful. Uh, it legitimately <laughs> is. I <laughs> can absolutely confirm parking on that street sucks. Dustin, did, did you not see Seven? Um, I, I did see Seven, okay. mostly just because I wanted to see how they handled Paul Walker, and sure. uh, not great. No, not great. That stare he has from inside the car in that movie is haunting. <laughs> it is upsetting. <laughs> he doesn't blink. Well, because I was going to say, I was worried you had missed the one of the greatest moments in the series, which is when The Rock says, Daddy's got to go to work, and Flex is out of a cast. Yep, yeah. yep. I I remember. I remember that. I remember very little, but that one, that stuck out in my head for sure. And then Vin Diesel stomping so hard that he makes a parking garage split in half. <laughs> they, they're they Avengers. You're right. Uh, Nathan, after your car wreck, did you say that line and try to flex out of your cast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and did you fail miserably? He was like, owie, owie, owie. <laughs> yeah, my, my wrist became even limper, actually. <laughs> the doctor's like, hey, don't do that. That makes no sense Why at all. Don't do that. It? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, so I have a question. Um, Again, Again, you don't have to start <laughs> everything with a guy. I have a question. Who is the hacker of this group? Because I thought it was Ludacris. And now well, there's... See, it used to be Ludacris, and now it's the chick from Game of Thrones. Ramsey, but they yeah. both do it. I don't know who this is. Was she in the last two movies? She's in eight. She created God's Eye. Uh, no, she's in... Isn't she in seven, too? I don't remember, dude. Maybe. I know she created God's Eye, though, right? Yeah, That's the, that was basically, her thing. Basically, yes. I just know she does stuff now. She, does, or she knows, knows stuff, stuff now. now. Yeah. Knows stuff now. Okay. I and she famously couldn't drive in Fast 9. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Famously. Very famously. Famously. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole plot point, assholes. <laughs> I fully forgot everything about 9, but I gotta ask, like, John Cena is playing peacemaker in this movie right oh, like, yeah. he's not <laughs> that's not jacob no. and that's not how he played jacob in the last movie completely different character okay <laughs> john cena i don't mind either in this movie no, he's I having just, fun. his whole plot is so needless yeah <laughs> dude it is i still don't understand what the fuck the plot line for tyrese ludicrous and uh game of thrones chick are ramsey they're, literally they're just trying to, just get, trying to get home, home. <laughs> it's fucking Catherine o'hara in home alone they're teaming up with john candy which in this movie is pete <laughs> davidson they're just trying to get home that's all they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, they go up to Pete Davidson, and Davidson's like, no, she's got all the earrings at home, the dangling oh, yeah, ones. Yeah, the dangling one. <laughs> the only God. thing that isn't like Home Alone is that if... Catherine O'Hare pulled up at the end of someone fucking blew up her car. Oh my god. And Jason Momoa is like, I'm huge in Sheboygan. 
this franchise is famous for quote unquote killing people off and then just bringing them right the fuck back. Yeah. So obviously everyone, oh, none of the no, yeah, everyone on the plane's fine. Them, yeah, Jacob's fine. <laughs> that death scene yeah. meant nothing to me. No, and the fact that they brought back Giselle, which I I barely remember six. Uh huh. But like. She should be full on dead more than any of them, honestly. But well, so should Luke Evans, yeah. but they brought him back and he died the same way she did, basically. <sighs> I just he, he had a couple scars. Uh-huh. And she didn't. He was in a coma for a little bit. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just this there's no stakes here. And the only reason I am coming back is Jason Momoa. That's the only reason. Well, and then this movie really strongly hints that Mr. Nobody is still alive, that even was, though his plane went down and exploded in the last one. That is horseshit. The fact that they keep teasing Kurt Russell and he doesn't show up. No. I was furious by the end of the movie. I was so angry. Oh, fast and I was fast and furious. <laughs> I was like, where is he? Bring him out. I need him. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jack Burton? Again, what is Kurt Russell doing in these fucking movies? I love him. And what is... I, what, I got so many questions. What is the agency? Uh, yes. <laughs> Are we just doing the, the high table from yeah. John Wick? It's, like, it's yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. It's S.H.I.E.L.D. It's the high table. Okay. It's the cult from Halloween 6. <laughs> it's... Yeah, they're just running shit. I just... They keep people in... The prison that Letty has put in might as well be where Magneto was held in X2. I like, put in here, why is Brie Larson and uh, Alan Richardson, and this is a little bit different, but why are they meeting in Cerebrus? Why are they, <laughs> right. why are they here? <laughs> and wh- why is Shirley Theron able to operate the air ducts from the inside the port where the inmates go? Uh, well, you've... <laughs> You've clearly never been to prison. I've clearly never been to prison. You're right. I, who am I to say? You no, know, it, it fully is shield up to the point where we even have like the faceless council that votes uh-huh. on bringing in Dominic Toretto. Wait. Also, what's the point of getting Letty transferred to that place? Great question. Know, is it so she can team up with Cipher, who's also being worked on by a robot laser? Oh yeah. We also have magical healing now. Yeah. Uh-huh. With the lasers. Yeah. The fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've got the Sentinels from the Matrix <laughs> patching them up. I don't know, man. There's there's just so many things I don't understand. Like, apparently Vin Diesel's got spider sense <laughs> because, like, he hears a dog barking in a Los Angeles neighborhood and mm-hmm. thinks something's afoot. Hang I'm like, on. what are you talking about? Well, he's had that since the first movie because there's that bit where he walks outside of his house and he just senses that Johnny Tran's about to pull up. That's yeah. true. That's, That's true. true. He, does, he literally has spider sense in that one. Yeah. Yeah. That actually tracks with the logic of these movies. Yeah. And there's the there's the bit in uh, Fast and Furious where, like, the, the, the they're about to like ram him and then they just go off the road mm-hmm. because he stares at them hard enough. Yeah, like, I just, I don't know. It, it kind of feels like that. Yeah, no, that all tracks. Mm-hmm. In that scene where Charlize Theron's explaining about Jason Momoa coming in and getting her henchmen, mm-hmm. he says uh, The man with no name. I am a man with no name and I'm like, man, if this was any other character, I'd be annoyed that, because you can't say that about yourself. You can't. Like, you have to have other people say that, but Jason Momoa can. Which is wild that they didn't have Scott Eastwood say it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> man, if little nobody isn't just the best character name for Scott Eastwood. <laughs> yes, I know. And Jason Momoa has sometimes got an accent, sometimes he doesn't. Oh. I love that he's non-committal about it. Yeah, every <laughs> once in a while he's Brazilian, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I love it. It's so perfect for what I want out of this franchise now is this this guy who's just like, I'm half in, half out, but when I'm in, I'm fucking in. Absolutely. Well, and I, you know, it's very funny to think that his dad is uh, Joaquin de Almeida in these movies. Like, there's, again, very little family resemblance. I've always thought Joaquin de Almeida looks like a Brazilian uh, Steve Gutenberg. Oh, my God. Like, when the movie movie started, I was like, hang on. Well, it's like, when you look at the dad and you look look like a Momoa and you're just like did you like fuck Hagrid's sister how uh, did that happen like, that, that woman from the uh, the other school in the, in the Goblet of Fire that comes ah, in yes. yeah. <laughs> Bo right. Baton yeah, nice yeah, yeah. thanks bro when Charlize Theron's henchmen turn on her and then they all try to fire their guns and they can't mm-hmm. because she's got a little device and she says did you think I would trust you? And mm-hmm. I'm just like, yes, why wouldn't you? you? You hired them to protect you. Exactly. You didn't know that they were going to turn on you until the moment they did right now. Right. This movie's so fucking stupid. Like, it's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and the fight here is great mm-hmm. there's the whole bit where she like shoves the dude's head into the wall while the elevator is falling mm-hmm. uh, but this is a long time to spend with a character who isn't quote unquote family not yet yep, <laughs> right. that's true. 
I, I would assume by the end of the movie, the, uh, the next movie, she's she isn't part of it. Well, I mean, literally, Deckard Shaw murders a bunch of like it was for all we know murdered Han, mm-hmm. and then one movie later, they're like, we need to hire him to save Little B. God damn it! That fucking Jason Statham airplane fight scene in Eight is so rad. It's the best part of the movie. It's oh, like a Jackie Chan sequence. Yes, <laughs> <It> rules. <laughs> I, I do like that they call attention to that at the end, where they're like, uh, you know, everyone is uh, the villain until they become part of the family. Not this time. I'm like, oh, great. Right. I'm glad we're self aware enough for this and uh the fact that charlie theron's apparently an immortal because then that this little nobody guy steps in and goes out of nowhere unprompted she lost six pints of blood normal person dies at four i'm like oh <laughs> cool <laughs> okay <laughs> that's right all right whatever and then they're trying yeah, to track rules. down <laughs> <laughs> trying, they're trying to track down han in rome mm-hmm. and they're like uh all the that fancy computer equipment you can't track him down and uh scott eastwood says i even swiped right on han's dating app and i'm like oh so that means han has his profile set to women and men oh because, you're right yeah, why else would that work Unless <laughs> Unless little nobody is catfishing fools out here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of the two. He's doing one or the other. And that's a lot. That's a lot. So That's so funny. No, this is when I wrote down like, oh my God, they're aiming for the Vatican. This is Mally as a fast villain. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. First off. I wrote mm-hmm. down, uh, there's too many quips going on here sure, because right. at one point, Tyree says, watch out ladies. This ain't none your business. Oh my God. Two, two pairs of nuns crossing the street that we're not paying attention at all. All. And I'm like, you gotta cut, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. Well, I mean, the joke, the 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 level of jokes we're getting in this movie is like, you know, Roman and Tej just improving with each other. The only thing you know about Rome is Roman no- uh, noodles. Uh, like, I'm like, I, I can't even say it. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Roman noodles. It doesn't make sense. Nope. Or maybe the stupidest side of the movie, which is they they find out the truck's got a bomb in it, mm-hmm. and Tyrese goes, "What happens if it goes off?" And Ludacris goes, "The bomb." And I'm like, this is the <laughs> stupidest fucking movie. <laughs> right, yeah. Roman has to explain how bombs work. Yeah, it will kill people. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and also knows the exact model and specs of this bomb in particular. Well, it's helpful that it looks exactly like the bomb from Dark Knight Rises mm, and the true. bomb from Oppenheimer. <laughs> like it looks like they just—it's universal. They just reused it. Right. That's what bombs look like. I, I guess I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's also—it was not particularly explained to us. I don't believe how the bomb is supposed to work mm-hmm. because, like, this thing is on fire, rolling through the streets, which apparently. Rome is just one big, uh, you know, shoot Downhill for this slogan. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the whole time I'm like, does someone have to set this off? Is is it's getting much like, like the bomb in the Dark Knight Rises? Yeah. Like it's a bomb, but we're not going to set it off. We're going to let it deteriorate. Yeah. until it becomes nuclear. I don't know, man. Well, no, and then finally <laughs> Jason Momoa flips a switch and says, "Dominic Toretto, you got 30 seconds to save Rome." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Which, look, that made me laugh really hard. <laughs> well, at the line of his that makes me laugh the hardest before that is when he comes out on top of that like bell tower oh yeah and what Mallory was pointing out earlier he's like all right dorks what are we blowing up Oh, the Vatican. Okay, I'll do it. But you guys are going to hell. Yeah, this is it's so good. This is the best. I was constantly in and out of this movie. Same. I was like about, okay, Jason Momoa said some crazy shit. I'm back in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, did you guys ever watch that fucking uh, terrible Apple show, The Morning Show? I, I did No, I tried, but no. I fucking hated that show <laughs> so much. Mm-hmm. And I would always be ready to turn it off, but then Billy Crudup would pop up on screen. I'm like, fuck, I'm back in right <laughs> that's how i feel about this movie it's like i'm almost out then momoa does something rad i'm like i'm back in let's go well he does something rad and then we cut to something stupid as shit like gas pumps that are for whatever reason just built into the side of a road across from a restaurant <laughs> dom has to tell us in adr it's gonna blow yeah that's gonna blow and then he, he's got to drive through the barriers of the banister awning of a, a restaurant i don't know dude this is the <laughs> stupidest fucking movie i've ever seen yes and it fucking <laughs> rules <laughs> the movie presupposes that dom can also hear everything that dante's saying yeah. whether it's over did you guys notice that everyone seems to be on the same frequency for walkie talkies mm-hmm. and everyone has a walkie talkie yeah. at all times yeah, that's how that's dude that's just like that's an issue in like all team movies like, sure. like yeah. that, that's a big issue in like the avengers movies I'm like oh, yeah. they talking to each other avengers the oceans movies i mean michael mckean i mean he's not the first one to put forth this thought but mm. he, he had a great point on twitter he's like take any modern movie take out the cell phones 
does the plot still work? Yeah. Same thing with walkie talkies and earpieces. I take them out. Can you still make the movie? Probably not. <laughs> oh, I, I've talked about the, this. I know that's a scary movie. You, in the age of cell phones, the X files doesn't work, mm-hmm. right? Because you need, <laughs> you need in the age of the internet and cell phones, you need these little towns to be unconnected or the story doesn't happen. Yep. Uh, yep. I mean, add like put cell phones in Seinfeld and half of those episodes go away. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> they can, they can talk about their problems. Hell, we, yeah. we, we dealt with that with Seinfeld with Kramer, where somebody had a cell phone in that audience. Oh, and that, that, that oh, made it real quick. Oh, <laughs> I appreciated that Dante, just for himself, does little things. Mm-hmm. Like, he he constantly poses like the Christ statue in Rio, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I, I appreciate. He sings opera poorly. He's a showman. He mm-hmm. is. The greatest showman. Hey. <laughs> Less racist. Yep. <laughs> that was that, that one was for Nathan. Thank you. People uh, just roll off jumping out of cars that are moving in this movie like yeah. it's nothing. That happens so many times during this Vatican thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. little nobody should at least have like a dislocated shoulder or something. Yeah. Well, cobblestone streets are basically cushions. <laughs> yeah, we know, we've know we known that for, for years. That's why they chose those. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> duh. <laughs> we've finally gotten to Brie Larson and Alan Richardson talking. Well, I was, I was going to say right before that, yeah. even more offensive than the crane bullshit is the news montage that wraps it up and says no one was hurt no fatalities get the fuck (laughs) out of my face what is this gi joe (laughs) that bomb explodes and takes off a couple city blocks worth yeah it does we see it yeah get the fuck out of my face with this bullshit well what they didn't actually they cut it out but they're like no fatalities like 57 priests died but Uh they're not people (laughs) or or there's catastrophic injuries infrastructure will take years to rebuild Uh like people didn't die on the scene they died at the hospital maybe that's what they meant to say So, this Alan Richardson scene and Brie Larson where they somehow got footage from the first movie, I don't know how. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Well, 42 <laughs> minutes into this film, which, by the way, Alan Richardson played Aquaman on Smallville, he so sure we have did. two Aquaman in this film. Dude, every time I see this dude, I only think of the dude in an episode of New Girl who had a micro penis. Wow. Oh my god, that was wow. him, you're right. That is him. Wow. And I cannot see past that character. I love this guy, yeah. and I think He's fantastic. I liked him in uh, the, the little bit of that Reacher show I've watched. Uh-huh. Like, Apparently, that show's rad. That's what I've from heard. What I've heard. Yeah. He's got a great on-screen presence. He's charming, mm-hmm. like effortlessly. He's got a good look. Mm-hmm. I I genuinely like him a lot. Like him and Jason Momoa are what dragged me into this movie. He sells the line if it violates the laws of God and gravity, uh-huh. <laughs> like, which is so funny. He spits out the stupidest dialogue, and it's believable. Yes, yeah. him and Momoa really carry this fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah, they do. About it. They do. And it seems like we're going to get more of him in the next movie, too, since uh, the, the twist that who could have seen coming. <laughs> which also makes no sense. Nope. He also tells us, I hate barbecues, yep. which is a really funny line. Yep. <laughs> this whole scene feels like a weird bit of like ARG like promotion, though, right? Mm-hmm. Like this feels like something we'd unlock on YouTube to promote the movie before it came out. Yeah. Not a scene that's yeah. actually in the movie. And, and he says, how did we let this go on for so long? And I'm like, that's a good <laughs> fucking question. <laughs> There's so many lines like that. These people are criminals. Yeah. Well, that's actually Michelle Rodriguez insisted on that line to make fun of Marvel, not oh, realizing wow. the irony. Yes, there is. You guys are doing more destructive damage than the Avengers, I think, at this point. The like, Avengers never blew up the Vatican, just yeah, throwing it out there. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Man. I, I love that we're not dipping our toes into the self-referential stuff, mm-hmm. but the fact that Vin Diesel was like, nope, this, we still got to play this stuff seriously. Everyone around you is telling you, dude, lean into the absurdity, and this franchise would be so much better. The camp. The camp, yeah. No, the next line that is very knowing is when Queenie tells Dom, you're no Gregory Peck, mm-hmm. and I wrote down, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to look uh, to make sure Hella Baird wasn't in Robin Holiday, because she makes that line, too. Oh, I know, right? But, but then, uh, again, and the self-referential stuff with the shot of Vin Diesel in front of a smoldering coliseum with the song <laughs> lyrics going, my world has fallen. Oh I'm like, get my the God. fuck out of my face with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's we get to Jordana Brewster and the kid, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, it's all cars all the fucking time. The fact that even the kid's fucking game is a racing game. Oh, I know. Jesus right. Christ, dude. It's a Ugh. cult. Yeah. It is a cult. He's he is being indoctrinated. It is a cult. And then there's a lot of gunplay in this movie. This is the only part that I like mm-hmm. because John Cena comes in to save this kid and, and Jordana Brewster. When did he just Kool-Aid man through walls? <laughs> dude, yes. I love this part. He gets a shotgun, shoots a bunch of holes in 
in the wall and you're like, what the fuck's he doing? Yes. And then a bunch of guys come in and he uses those holes to put the gun through and blast. He kills two guys by shooting them in the fucking face with a shotgun. Yeah. yeah. There is zero blood. Yeah. And then he <laughs> suplexes a motherfucker through the floor. He's got the same structural integrity of this house that they had in Malignant. Like, <laughs> something's got to be checked. Like, I don't know what is going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but they got to have it looked at. I guess that's what happens when you rebuild this house a couple of times. Is yeah. <laughs> things things don't work out so well. Right. I mean, it, it, it was government funded infrastructure, technically. <laughs> so, you know, it's not great. They're giving you the bare minimum. Yeah. yeah. Mally, I know you love Brie Larson. I don't need her in this movie. I think this character is so useless. I don't need most of the people in this fucking movie. <laughs> I think she's actively bad yes. in this movie. Yeah. And I like Brie Larson a lot. I like Brie Larson, too. I just think she's needlessly in this movie. I think the best part of this movie that she has is is where she doesn't even speak is she just digs her shoes into Jason Momoa's car. Oh, that, like, was, that was great. Yeah. That's great. And then out of the rest of that, you could get rid of her. What's incredible <laughs> is that they come up with this plan to spring Letty without actually talking about it. Mm-hmm. Like Dom hands her his cross and she instinctively knows, okay, I have to stab Letty yep. so that they take her to the laser clinic. Yep. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I, that's that's just a trope. It's just like people that hang up the phone without saying goodbye. Like, it's just what we do now. That is literally how I hang up the phone. <laughs> she, she asks if he has any enemies in Rio de Janeiro and the first thing he thinks of is a guy that he knows is dead. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like, oh, oh yeah, Hernan Reyes. And I'm like, you watch, you watch The Rock shoot. Well, I guess death doesn't matter in this universe, nope. but still. Yep. Nope. I would not be surprised if the dad comes back, if Jason Momoa's dad comes back in like one of the next two movies. Oh, uh, don't you fucking dare. Why the fuck not at this point? Lean into the absurdity. Right. Like we're we're one movie away from the fucking Transformers being in this. No, like I'm please, not please God. Jason Momoa uses two remote controlled fucking 18 wheelers <laughs> in the climax of this movie. Yeah. So we're close. Yeah. We're getting there. What we're getting further away from, but somehow still forcing into this uh, franchise is the street racing mm. because we go to Brazil and I'm like, man, you, we don't need street races anymore. We're past it. We're fucking past Dude, it. Dude, I remember when this trailer came out, there were literally people online like, oh, fucking finally, like they're going back to like the street racing scene, back uh-huh. to their roots. And I'm like, they're they're not, guys. <laughs> they're really not. And I, I think it's, is this character, this uh, Brazilian guy that's running the races, is he in, in any of the other movies? He's new, right? Yeah. He was in five, oh, I think. I was going to say four, but you might be right. I had to look it up. I li- I fully did not remember him at all. Nope. And this is played like, oh my God, they killed Diogo. I thought he was new for this movie. He is in an earlier movie. I just can't remember which one. Okay. I genuinely thought he was made up for this movie. But he, he says, this is so fucking stupid. He <laughs> says to Dom, he's like, I heard you got a little heat on you. And Dom goes, nah. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? What you were mean, on, nah. You were on international news. You helped blow up the fucking Vatican. What the fuck are you talking about? Everyone applauds for Dom when he shows up, too. Yeah. Yep. And just when I start to think, where the fuck is Momoa? He rolls in. Yeah, he fucking does. In this outfit that is incredible. And he does his little dip with the enchante. He strokes those guys' guns uh-huh. when they pull them out. Uh-huh. Like, it's it's so good. He, he has this purple car and he says to Dom, he goes, yes, the car that matches the Dre's. I'm like, he's got purple pubes? What Hell the yeah, fuck he is, does. What are we talking about? Glitter. Well, dude, that's something uh, my wife pointed out when we watched this in theater. She's like, he color coordinates yep. every one of his outfits with every car he drives. It's exquisite. His nails are, are the same color as his outfit like it's not just that scene <laughs> yes. every time he's in a car it matches his outfit it's beautiful which is uh, like something i kind of missed from the earlier movies that's the funny thing about too fast too furious right is everyone is color coordinated yes yep, yep. And then we get, I mean, I was going to gloss over this little street race because who could care? But we mm-hmm. get the greatest scene of the movie, mm. which is, oh, my God, Jason Momoa <laughs> with his hair and little pigtails. Hell yeah. In a robe, painting the nails of the corpses of the guys John Cena killed with yeah. their faces taped open, like their eyelids taped open. Having girl talk. Having yeah. girl talk, giving them uh, mimosas, or was it uh, mojitos? Jason mimosas. Jason mimosas. <laughs> and telling the story, there's flies buzzing around, and he, this is he's just full-on gay joker, and it's awesome. And let's not <laughs> gloss over the fact that J- Jason Dante tells us there's no heaven. Yes! <laughs> In this movie, yeah. the char- this character tells us there's nothing on the other side. <laughs> it's so funny. 
funny. We have to establish too. He's also at Dom's house, right. Doing all of this, like, cause that is Dom's backyard. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Wait, is it? I think it is. It has to be because it's the dead soldiers that John Cena killed. Yeah. Oh my God, you're right. Yes, yes. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, but it's it's the best part. Wait, I hope there's a scene in the next one where they go back home. And Those two guys, guys are still, are there? still just sitting there. <laughs> they're just decomposed. That should be the road game. The more they cut back to that, they're just more decomposed. Uh, Wait, so that implies that that robe probably belongs to Georgiana Brewster's, Brewster's character, probably, <laughs> or Michelle Rodriguez, Prob- or or Dom's. You never know. It's not Dom's. <laughs> it's not Dom's. There's nothing musky about that robe. <laughs> And whoever it is, who the fuck would know? They cut off money to Ludacris and all of them. And then we get this Wolf of Wall Street scene where Tyrese just opens up his robe and he's got a bunch of money taped to him. Is that is that meant to be a joke about how he had all the money stuffed in his waistband and too fast? I, Maybe. Does he always walk around like that? Because That's uncomfortable. Yeah. You're going to get a paper cut. That, <laughs> that's my question is like in this in the reality of the movie, like if he's just walking around like that all the time. Right. Why? 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 How does he wear tank tops? That, oh. and, it means he's got to wear coats everywhere. Also, it's 2023. We have to retire the joke of someone yelling in English whenever yeah. someone does tech jargon. Yeah. Like, it's, well, I'm done with it. And I don't need two tech people saying the same things back to back. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't need it. I mean, I, we just need to get rid of these like hacking scenes altogether. It's yeah. like, guys, we've seen swordfish. <laughs> you can't top it. Yeah. And that scene from uh, NCIS where two people use the same keyboard and mouse on one computer. <laughs> Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think it, this is the appropriate time to say earlier this season, we talked about how we don't particularly get Pete Davidson. Yep. We did not. Well, okay. <laughs> that's fair. I just want to say, because I've had listeners ask me, they're like, what the fuck is wrong with those guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, I think now I get it and I don't want what he's selling. <laughs> <laughs> Because this scene made me physically angry. Yep. Like, my my face got red. I have no issues with Pete Davidson, except that this scene is fucking pointless. <laughs> it is pointless. And I was going to say, that's why I like this scene, because this is what I want. I want real people just bullying Pete Davidson in movies. That I can get behind. <laughs> that I can deal with. What did this man... Did he nothing. fuck I your wife? Nothing like, against him. Not one fuck? single thing. Not Nothing. I just... I don't get it. I don't get it. I was like, I know. He's working his way through... Through LA and New York. I don't think he's made it to Florida yeah. yet. Calm yeah. down. Well, uh, Meryl Streep just got uh, got a divorce, so oh, please. <laughs> keep an eye on her socials. And this is a perfect time to tell you. Priscilla and I were watching uh, uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies together uh-huh. and when he came on screen for the first time, she goes, I just, I have a thing for just ugly guys. And I'm like, thanks Priscilla. That feels real fucking great. What is what the fuck does that mean for me? It means exactly what she said. I know. I know. Okay. But no, this scene is just the fight makes no sense. I don't need fake tension fights between characters like i know they're not they're not really fighting tyrese and Ludacris. this is stupid well, and they're just sort of like having a well so in any other movie this weird little comedic tussle would be them distracting him so that they can get some information yes. or steal something but no you think that's what sun king is doing yeah it's just these two adult men having a little tussle yeah. well and meanwhile han's just tripping balls yeah, which never comes up again what is yeah what the, that is the worst edible ever if it, if you trip for about 12 seconds and it's over. Like, and, yeah, and then at the end, Han is like, actually, there's somewhere else we can go. Yeah. And I was like, I, I literally stood up and said, then why? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that Pete Davidson cameo in there somehow. We've got to, right? Yeah. Then we cut to the prison with Charlize Theron and uh, Michelle Rodriguez. We have another pointless fight, but man, I just wrote down, oh shit, girl fight. It's just like that movie Michelle Rodriguez was in that I can't remember the name of <laughs> for some odd reason. And they also are like, we only have like two minutes before the guards come back. Yeah. And then uh, the scene goes on for 20 more minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we get Jason Statham and a note I just wrote down, much similar to like everyone just jumping out of moving cars and being fine. Mm. People are way too brazen about making sudden movements with guns pointed at their heads because Uh that's how they all get away is like these guys burst in from the agency. Oh, right. They have guns pointed on all of them and they all just like smack the guns away and fist fight. And I'm like, you guys just once that's never at some point that's not going to work out. No, 
one point in time, one of you guys are going to catch a bullet. I love the reveal of the dude in the beanbag, though. It's great. Holy shit. When Sun King gets, like, knocked into it at first, and he just hears a moaning sound from inside. Oh, right. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that completely. Yeah. yeah. And then we get Alan Richardson catching up with uh, Vin Diesel, and mm-hmm. he says, they, they literally try to pull a Skyfall. They're like, oh, the days of one man behind the wheel are over. Now it's all computer stuff. We don't need people on the field. And right. Like, Guys, you guys are pulling from everything. And then, to not be outdone, then they do a Mission Impossible 3 with yes. the bridge scene. This shootout happens. Yes. The missile hits this the 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 truck that they're in, which when you know the twist later, makes it makes no, no sense, sense that, at all. <laughs> and then Dom, there, there's five or ten guys like opening fire on this group. And Dom gets out and just walks through the bullets. Yep. Like he's not even, he's not dodging. There's a minigun aimed at him. He lifts a car. Yep. With rebar. He uses rebar as like a, a way to, to counterbalance it and just lifts the car and then uses a car door as a shield like he's fucking Captain America. Right. And, <laughs> I mean, this is the least offensive thing about this movie, but when did car doors prevent bullets from going through? Like, it's not made of vibranium, <laughs> no. my guy. It's a car door. I don't know. This is where I wrote Brie rolls up dressed like she's in the Life on Mars video. <laughs> <laughs> Just wearing the new, the hottest new fit from Eileen Taylor. <laughs> Dante pulls a, again, a very Joker move by yanking out one of his own teeth. Yep. And says maybe another one of my favorite lines of the movie, you butthole. And <laughs> so good. He also, when when Dom is beating the shit out of him, he like has a very Heath Ledger cackle like yes. what he does it's against that car door. It's mm-hmm. good shit again momoa knew exactly what he was doing with this performance and then a fantastic part of this movie Mm -hmm. where he's like i thought he was gonna punch vin diesel in the nuts because he goes do you like ballet i adore swan lake you seem like a nutcracker guy to me that was a great line and then then they play swan lake in the score as this helicopter comes in i was like this okay this is a 10 out of 10 moment this is fucking awesome And, and momoa momoa seems to hear the score (laughs) he starts dancing to it he does yeah and then we we cut over to John Cena and Lil B scene where na- now we're just stealing from Mad Max because now we've got an interceptor with cannons attached to it and we're just doing Fury Road, driving through the desert, shooting things. Uh, like, Lil B takes his first life. Yeah. He's a double O. He's got his first two confirmed kills. Can we, can, can we appreciate that Jacob has a bat cave? Of course like he, fully he does. He has like Michael Keaton's bat cave. He has a fucking bat cave. We, we didn't talk about him coming out of the little plane oh and the little uh, Smirnoff bottles for the fuel. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that. Uh-huh. Holy shit. I got so mad at that scene because I'm like, okay, so you're... Your little glider is in the cargo hold, so why are you even going through the rigmarole of getting on the fucking plane? I don't know. And he's like, "We, I want the agency to see us, to catch us on camera, mm. but that really comes to nothing. No. So, I don't know. Can we just kind of get, get to, like, the chase scene with yeah. uh, Momoa and everything? Because, like, there's so many egregious things here. Dom driving harder than a helicopter can fly. <laughs> Makes sense to me. He keeps getting Dodge Chargers that look exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And then he drops out of the back of this plane that's at least, like, 12 stories high. Totally fine. Who said anything about landing? So fucking stupid. <laughs> and then they shoot two helicopter grappling hooks at this car. And mm-hmm. he's, he's able yeah, to... And somehow he doesn't get stabbed by either of them. I just... Man, the amount of times I try, fuck you, keep going. And then my notes here at the end, I right. just I could deal with it. He drops those helicopters onto traffic, mm-hmm. and I wrote down, I don't even know that these are bad guys. You just blew up, yeah. like the other people, the people in the other cars. That's the point I wrote down too, which is like, it's a good thing no one else is driving across this dam later Except on. Except for super villains, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Momoa does the fantastic here we go line so that good. is um, incredible and clearly like ADR because his lips are not moving. No. And then the, the death scene of John Cena is so fucking funny. <laughs> like, it's hilarious to watch this car upside down rocketing towards these other cars. I, I laughed hysterically in my living room. Uh-huh. I could not deal with it. It's comedy gold, baby. And then to top it off, Jason Momoa going, oh, I guess he won't be coming to the next family barbecue. And I was like, <laughs> I love this guy so fucking much it's a great he's such a good villain mm-hmm. 
I was curious. Okay. So fast and curious. I was, I was fast and curious. Fast and curious. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hold on. Hold on. That deserves it. It does. It does. <laughs> You're two for two on this one, man. Hell yeah. Which part of the driving lesson from the beginning of the movie no clue. included jumping between cars? No clue. I don't know. Because Vin Diesel recaps it like, well, I've taught you everything you need to know about jumping between two cars. It felt like a placeholder mm-hmm. and then they changed it much like the Alan Richson twist they're like I don't know <laughs> he's on the bad guy side now <laughs> I fully expected this movie to end with Lil B drifting and that saves the day yep. yeah yep maybe that's how the next movie will start they'll drift away from a flood from a <laughs> dam breaking I don't sure. know Mally, we're right here at the end. I know we kind of sped through this episode, and that's not a pun, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a lot to talk about here at the end, so please, can you recap what happens here on the dam? I can fucking try. Mm-hmm. So, Vin and his, quote, son, in quote, still not convinced, because, <laughs> I mean, you look at his parents, you look at him, there's just, I mean, no fucking way. There's some <laughs> questions. There's some questions. That's ludicrous, this kid. Um, <laughs> they are, like, cornered on the dam by just... Jason Momoa remote controlling two semis. Somehow, I I don't know how you even physically do that, but (laughs) go on. And then to get away, they drive down the fucking dam. Yeah. You you made one mistake. You, you didn't, didn't take, take my away car. my car. <laughs> He's turning into Stallone. He's he turning into Stallone at the end. You disobeyed the law. <laughs> and so like you you think they get away, but then you see the plane coming in that Ludacris and those fuckers are on, <laughs> and it gets exploded. Mm-hmm. Plot twist reveal. Fucking Jack Ames. Reacher shot it down. Ames. Yeah, yeah. He's working with Momoa all of a sudden. Yeah. And then Momoa is just like, all right, fuck it. Blows up the fucking dam. They do it three times. They come back to him having these little devices, these little proximity mines uh-huh. of just blowing shit up. So it should be no surprise that this dam blows up here at the end. So we don't know <laughs> if Ramsey and all those fuckers are dead. They're not. Well, okay, yeah, we know they're, they're not. not they're but not. <laughs> for the sake of the movie, we don't know. Dom, like Dom and his son are like running away from an exploding dam. Sure. And then we cut to fucking the snow prison. <laughs> uh huh. And Charlize Theron and Michelle Rodriguez get out into the Antarctic climate in fucking tank tops I- <laughs> and don't immediately die. Uh huh. Into the set of the thing. I wrote down. I this movie should have ended with them like passing a bottle of whiskey back and forth uh-huh. over a small fire. <laughs> we do end on a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Like the dam's about to explode. Dante is like, oh, your suffering is over. Now it's time to die. Couple things. Number one, how are they going to make the trailer for the next movie where they have to show Ludacris and all of them? The characters. They have to do that. I, unless you make a much shorter trailer. I mean, they could in-game it. True. Yeah. 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 And it's, ju- it's just a minute and a half of Dom just crying. <laughs> and of all the stunts in this movie, I wrote down for this damn one of him driving down the dam. You can kiss the darkest part of my asshole with this fucking stunt. Because I don't... I can't. I'm fucking... I, I'm, it looks terrible. It yeah. makes no sense. It does not look good. It's just... And I don't need to see slow motion Lil B screaming as glass shatters around him. Much like the slow motion shot of the villain of the last movie with the glass shattering around him. Oh my gosh, that. yeah. I don't need it. But I like that one more than this one. Yeah. And, man, there's just... The, the reason why none of this shit ever does anything for me versus when they do similar outrageous stunts in like the Bond movies, for example, or John Wick or something uh-huh. is those don't those movies don't treat me like I'm stupid. Like this franchise loves to do like. I guess maybe that's just a case of knowing your audience of like, this is the least common denominator, but like, it's just so, so over the top Mm -hmm. that I I can't jive with it at all. I don't know. I don't know. I guess because I've seen more ridiculous shit that like, this doesn't impress me anymore. Do you think the next movie is going to, because it's going to be like Dom all sad because people die. Do you think it's going to be called Quantum of Furiousness? (laughs) (laughs) Just a, just a little moment of furiousness. Okay. How did they escape the, the, the flood? I think he just surfs it. I think he gets a part of the car door from the Dodge Charger. God, please. And we do like Batman the- Batman and Robin style. God, please. I we want We do that. another Die Another Day. Die Another Day. We just parasurf <laughs> the fucking the flood. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. Mojito. I don't know. Please let that happen. <laughs> I will I will never ask for anything else. I just wrote down Indra fucking movie when they showed Gal Gadot. I didn't care. They should have thrown in Hans Zimmer's like Oh my god. Way to make this movie better. That would be fucking awesome. Way to make the movie better. But like anytime she shows up in a movie from now on, I want that that fucking Wonder Woman sting. Yes. Stay tuned, assholes. Hey, that little music drop is fucking killer it is as bad as those movies are yep and then the the rocks back in this mid credit scene and i'm well, like yeah because his other franchise tanked the, right. the fact that there was all this stupid bullshit drama that i much like you mentioned earlier nathan about all the drama behind the scenes yeah i had to learn unwittingly like against my will the same with like the jada and will smith shit on on twitter now like <laughs> i don't want to know any of this shit i know of course he comes back into after saying oh there's no way brother i'll ever come back like he's fucking hulk hogan well, well, that's because he was going to try to go fucking, you know, Emperor Palpatine over the DC universe yeah. and that failed miserably. Well, right. didn't you know the hierarchy of power had shifted? Yeah. So, <laughs> so fucking dumb. Just not in his favor. Yeah, exactly. Somehow Hobbes has returned. No, I just, I don't, I, I'm coming back for the next one, but it's only because of Jason Momoa. Well, no, apparently they're doing, so there's going to be a sequel to this that, you know, follows the family but then they're doing a Hobbs spinoff of him versus Dante apparently and I tell you in my research for this movie I looked up Jason Momoa's uh, filmography would it surprise you that he has a movie coming out soon called in the life of Dante oh that is not related to this franchise at all wow. <laughs> really <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. In the hand of Dante. I looked it up based on the plot synopsis. It has nothing to do with this Dante, but I thought that was incredible. Oh, my God. You're right. Yep. Yep. No, I, I'm coming well, back. Well, now, hang on. Uh -huh. the, st the little plot synopsis follow the dark and violent path of a man who plunges into a metaphorical hell until he reaches paradise in search of his forbidden and impossible love. You know Ooh, what? That's a prequel film. Yeah, that's you're an right. origin story. You're right. Now that, now that I hear it out loud. Yep. Also... It co-stars Gal Gadot. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Well, hold on. Maybe this the, is it. Listen to this cast. Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, Gerard Butler, Oscar Isaac, and Sabrina Im Impacator, the chick from a uh, fucking White Lotus season two. Oh, oh okay. wow. This is a banging cast. I'm into that. Holy shit. It's the director of the Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Okay, this sounds kind of great. What is this movie? Wait, wait, wait. The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, which uh, our villain from the last movie was in. Oh Holy my gosh, shit, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's all connected, fella. Are yeah. all of these secret Fast and Furious prequels? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> what if in the next movie, the way they like take down Momoa is they just hit his head again and he's back to normal. Oh my, And now he's good. And <laughs> yeah. now he joins the family. Now he's like aggressively straight to fight the cybernetic <laughs> version of his father <laughs> like that episode of boy meets world where they go back in time yeah yeah <laughs> holy yes. fuck yeah i'm in hey, the feeny's still around they could put him in this movie. what a pull by the way that's a Jesus great, another great pull <laughs> thanks boys <laughs> I mean, that's Fast X. Is, sure there, is. is there anything else we want to talk about? Any notes we, we didn't cover you guys had? We didn't even mention uh, Dan Daniela Melkor. Who is that? Uh, Isabel. She, Isabel. Oh, the right. The ants that they have to call out. Yeah. yeah. She's <laughs> wasted in this movie. Mm -hmm. She does have that great moment where her car flips over and the camera follows her just screaming yeah, while it like great. skids across the ground. It's pretty fantastic. That's great. She's another too good for this movie. Yeah, I agree. Was she in eight or nine? No, no. Okay. of course, of course not. No, no, no. She's new for this. That was the thing. She shows up in this movie, and for like the, they have the hubris to be like, "Well, we'll wait and to yeah. explain the connection here." Yeah, everyone's gonna be so excited that what's his name is back, and we will reveal it with a photo. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's so amazing how many people own production stills from previous films so many it really is so many they shop at hot topic <laughs> <laughs> well, all right fellas why don't we get into prop cop mm. For new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where we look at all of the props in the movie that we're talking about this week. Yeah. Any physical item, and we take each one from the movie for ourselves. Uh, Mally, this is your movie. You get first pick. Oh, thank God. What is the prop you want? Momoa's entire wardrobe. I, I had a feeling. <laughs> I had. A, I would love to see you in that purple outfit. That, oh, no. My wife looked at me uh, after the movie. She's like, you can dress like that anytime. Yeah. You could pull it off. Yep. You legit could pull it off. You absolutely could. Thank you, guys. Genuinely, I think you could pull that 
that off. I mean that, yeah. Oh my god. All right, pigtails it is tonight. <laughs> I want you to enchanté, though, every time you, <laughs> you dress up in that outfit. <laughs> it should be noted, I went to a Halloween party the other night. Uh-huh. And <laughs> wall-to-wall Momoas. <laughs> I wish, I wish. I did go as Dumbledore, which is like the Brit- old British version of this character. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, my son went as Harry Potter, so. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. So there was like, it was at this apartment where these that these three guys live in, and they all decided they were just dressing up as me for Halloween. Oh my god. <laughs> so it was three dudes in black pants, white t-shirts, and denim jackets. Hell and I was yeah. like, this is my multiverse of madness. <laughs> <laughs> I want just the DeLorean. Yeah. I think I it's a cool ass way for them to bring back the DeLorean, this modern version of it. Mm-hmm. And I, it's a shame that that's like the only scene that that car is in. But Oh my god. If they ever do it, if they ever introduce time travel and don't call the movie Fast to the Future, <laughs> I'm gonna be so upset. You already got the DeLorean. You already got it. Nathan, what do you want? I was a little greedy when it came to wardrobe as well. I want Tess's jacket, Brie Larson's jacket that says good vibes only yeah. on the back. It's, it's very, very Akira. It yeah. is. I like her bedazzled shoes. Oh, I loved her boots. <laughs> yeah. And no, I was also a big fan of Cypher's first outfit, which is white boots, a black long duster, yeah. and gold lame pants. Hell yeah. When she steps out of DeLorean in that outfit. That Holy is a shit. good look. It's so good. I'm telling you, boys, fast to the future is on the way <laughs> she looks incredible in this movie yeah. like even like the scenes where she's supposed to be roughed up jesus no it's a great look dude yeah especially compared to her first movie in this franchise oh my god with the mini locks oh so rough with her goofy ass haircut no, no thanks yeah all right, well, what about bit part, which is where we look at all the minor roles in this movie? I have to to say I got to go first. Okay. Fuck. Because I'm I'm fearful that what you guys are going to take by it. Okay. Say, so am I. I want to be Bob. <sighs> Bob's one of the Bob's one of the security guys. Bob is one of the the henchmen. Yeah. And Bob is a featured extra because he's in three scenes of this movie. Mm-hmm. He's there during the scene where Momoa takes all the henchmen. He's there at the Vatican. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite exchanges of the movie, Momoa goes uh have we made them all terrorists he goes their images have been fed to the authorities and Momoa goes all right bob <laughs> and he slaps him on the back i also loved that he's playing the joker essentially mm-hmm. and he has a henchman named bob mm-hmm. much like jack nicholson yeah and then bob is one of the corpses with the tape on his face oh, oh, damn it. Great. he's the one with his eyes just bulging out of his fucking skull <laughs> yeah you you took mine because mine sorry. was i want to be wh- i'll be the other dead guy there then. you go great. there you go perfect perfect nathan what do you want to be there's a bit where the bomb is rolling down the steps in rome uh-huh. and uh, there is a lady with two dogs who narrowly misses the bomb yeah. she like sort of jumps out of the way i want to be her that's a great like moment i i noticed that i'm surprised none of us picked the guy that's in jason statham's punch a bag which we didn't <laughs> really get into too much but that guy that's a great bit of comedy that's so good that's a great bit of comedy yeah all right fellas what is the silver lining for Fast X. Who's going to go first? Uh, I've got one. It's kind of a meta one, but this is a Fast and Furious movie, so uh, none of them actually died. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Probably right. Yeah. Mine kind of goes in line with that. Giselle's back. Yeah. And who could give a fuck? But <laughs> great. Uh, Mally, what you got? Kal-El, no. <laughs> Can I make a guess? <laughs> Can I make a guess? Yes. Some priests probably died during that Vatican explosion. Oh, brother, you nailed it. The Vatican <laughs> blew the fuck up, and I'm here for it. <laughs> I had a feeling. I had a feeling. That is the hat trick of cheers, by <laughs> the way. Just three. throwing it out there. Three for three. I think that's a record for the show. So I mean, for me, yeah, because <laughs> I usually get booed. <laughs> All right, fellas, before we uh, wrap it up for the week, we got to talk about a pick me up as we do with every episode, a movie that you pair with Fast X that is somehow tied to it. Or even if it's just a movie that you watch that you felt better afterwards, what is a movie people should double feature with Fast X? Uh, Nathan, let's start with you. What you got? Yeah, I couldn't help but think of another father and son story with a road trip that uh, goes awry. Okay. Uh, I went with a goofy movie. Oh, my God. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Leaning Tower of 
of Cheesa. <laughs> the blackest Disney movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's not even like me making that joke. That know, is the it's best episode, episode of Atlanta. Of Atlanta. Yes. It's the best. <laughs> also, the most delicious pizza I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yes. Why doesn't Cheese actually do that? Yes. I want that pizza and I want the pizza from the beginning of a Secret, Secret of the Use. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Literally, when I, I, I spent some time in New York earlier this year yeah. and that was like one of the things I said. I was like, if pizza doesn't act exactly like the beginning of Secret of the Use, I'm <laughs> going back to LA. If this pizza isn't Nickelodeon gack, yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> Speaking of physics breaking, yeah. I gotta say, I didn't care too much for the stunt work in this movie, but I do care for this movie that I'm gonna recommend right now for its stunts. Uh, and the catchphrase that I live my life by, which is, life short, stunt it. <laughs> I'm recommending Hot Rod. Yes. Gotta do it. Hell yeah. Gotta do it. Fantastic. I know I recommend it all the time, but it was that or speed, and I feel like I just did speed recently, so I'm doing, hot, I'm doing Hot Rod. <laughs> Mally, what do you got? Well, you know, this is our Thanksgiving episode, and it's all about family. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with another movie that's all about family. Okay. The producer's cut of Halloween 6. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. The baby's yours, isn't it, Dom? (laughs) All about the implication, boys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I guess I'll allow it. I guess I'll allow it. Last question, fellas. (laughs) <laughs> and I think we already explained it at the top of the, the, the episode, but do we recommend Fast X? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Without a fucking doubt. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's honestly tough, man. I get it. I think maybe if I, I wish I had watched this in two sittings like mm-hmm. Mally did this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe that's the way to do it is treat it like, uh, like, you know, you're watching a couple episodes of TV, but I, this was, this was a tough one to sit through in one sitting. It's, it's too long. I legitimately cannot wait for the next one. I can't either. I'm so excited. I can't either. I can't wait for that $440 million budget to be put to <laughs> The budget gets bigger every time you I talk know, about it. I it's, know. It's not coming out till 2025 and they have this ending. Like, yeah. that's so bonkers to me. Yeah. This is, I mean, now we know how people felt when Empire Strikes Back came out, y'all. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. A little bit. I say sure, I do recommend it. It's stupid as absolute hell. And I find most of these characters to be incredibly annoying. Mm. But there is one saving grace in this movie, and we've talked about him a lot, but it is Momoa. Yeah. What do we think the title's gonna be? Because they have there's no naming convention. No. It's gonna have fast and or furious in the title, because they just can't break away from that. So Ashley thought I was doing a bit when I said F9 the fast saga. It sounds She's like, like a that's bit. not real. Like it sounds like a bit. <laughs> it does. Let's just run through it. The Fast and the Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, The Fast and the Furious 3, Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious, stupid. Uh, Fast 5, Furious 6. Furious 7. Furious 7, Fate of the Furious, stupid. Fast 9, or wait. F9, F9, F9 the Fast, fast saga. saga, stupid. Fast X. What's the 11th going to be? It's just going to be Furious 11. Or Fast X Part 2, which is, I think, what it's called right now on IMDb. Hmm. Fuck me. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know what they need? do fast xx and then the final one fast triple x holy shit and you tie it into the triple x franchise there you go i did it i did it for you fast triple x state of the union (laughs) whoever wins we lose (laughs) yeah i i i don't know man i will watch the next one i i don't know if i'll go back and watch eight or nine probably not but oh wait no i have it Mm. the fast family rises Uh, perfect my god the rise of toretto (laughs) toretto versus riddick dawn of furious oh boy Oh boy. Dawn of the family. <laughs> Dusk of the family. I'm running out of steam here, fellas. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, and leave some feedback on our show or this episode in general. We'd greatly appreciate that. If you haven't already, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and or TikTok, as well as on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And if you want to send us an email, drop us some uh, some info, you can do so at uh, the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Tell us how we're doing, suggest an episode for the show, whatever you want to do. You can send it our way. Now that's Fast X. I guess we'll return next season with another Fast movie. That's a good question. Which one are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, Nathan, yeah. next week, your pick. Yeah. So why don't you give me a clue for what we're talking about? Uh, next week, a child kidnapping goes worse than usual. <laughs> All right. Jesus. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're never good, but this one's a particularly bad one. <laughs> that's debatable. I guess kind of going along with uh, one of these movies where there was a baby stolen. Sure. So- 
Well, there you go. That's a pretty broad one. So do with that what you will, everybody. Does anybody have anything else to say about Fast X before we get out of here? I, you know what? I'm done. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spent. All right. Yeah, all right. Spent. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Enjoy the holidays. Rest in peace, Diogo. Oh, fuck. Rest in peace, Oatmeal. And I guess everybody that was on that played. And maybe John Cena, but mostly Oatmeal, if I'm going to be honest with you. Sure. <laughs> and until next week, as always... Enchanté. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh, Look it up. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.